everyone, welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies, and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a seamless repeating pattern using GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.14, which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course, before I get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here, as well as my GIMP book of layers and GIMP and Inkscape help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can check out any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. And you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. Your membership includes access to things like my GIMP Help Center app, as well as my GIMP Book of Layers ebook and future ebooks that are released on my website. You can start your premium membership with a seven day free trial, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here is the graphic I'm going to be using for today's tutorial. This is a sugar skull. It's often seen in Dia de los Muertos celebrations. And you can click here to download this for free. I went with the smallest download size here because we're going to be creating a pretty small pattern. So I'll minimize this. Here is the final result. So this seamless repeating pattern was created using what's called the offset tool. This tool was introduced in GIMP 2.10.12, which I went over briefly in my What's New in GIMP 2.10.12 tutorial. I actually released a how to create an import patterns tutorial before this new feature was released, right before it was released actually. So definitely check that out if you wanna see how to create your own seamless repeating patterns by hand or manually without using this offset tool. But this tool is great whenever you have something like a design like this where it's already done. You just need to bring it into GIMP and turn it into a seamless pattern. So let's start off by creating a new document. I'll go to File New and I'll change the size to 250 by 250. I should note this is a fairly large pattern size. Usually they're around the 100 by 100 size. But the reason I'm creating a slightly larger pattern here is because I'm going to be using this for a pretty large final document. As you can see here, the document in the final result is 1920 by 1080. So I don't want these sugar skulls being too small for that. So you can make this whatever size you want. I'm gonna go with 250 by 250 for now and click OK. Once I've done that, I'm gonna come over to File, Open as Layers, and this is going to allow me to open up the design we're gonna be using as a layer. So I'll come over here to my folder. I'm gonna to try to search for the download here. Okay, so here is the download. If I click on it, I get a preview over here on the right side. So now I'll come down and click open. That's gonna open up my sugar skull here as a new layer. We could just rename this sugar skull. So just double click on the name to rename it. And I'll start by grabbing my scale tool so I can hit shift S on the keyboard or come over here to my toolbox and click on the scale tool. Make sure the little chain link here is locked and I'm just going to resize this a little bit. If I hold the control key, that's gonna allow me to resize this from the center. And that may be the command key for those of you on Mac. So I can make this a little larger here, right there, and now I'll just click scale. And this looks a little bit pixelated right now because we're zoomed in at 200%, so you guys can ignore that. But the next thing I wanna do is I want to center this up on the page, otherwise the repeating pattern will look a little bit off. So what I'll do for that is I can come over here to my alignment tool and just click on the object here. Make sure it's aligning relative to image and then just click to align this to the center of target and then click to align this to the middle of target and that will ensure that this is center aligned. So next we're gonna use the offset tool and I'm gonna start by duplicating this layer because I want there to be a more densely populated pattern in terms of how much of our final vector design here is going to show up in the pattern. So to do that, I'll come over here to the sugar skull layer and click the duplicate layer icon. And now with this duplicated layer, the first thing I need to do is I need the layer boundary to be the entire size of my composition. So I'll come over here and go to layer, layer to image size, and that will extend the boundary of our copy. Next, I can come over here and go to layer, transform, offset. So this is the new offset tool. And with this tool, you can create a uniform offset based on whatever parameter you want. So for example, if I just want the width to be offset, I can click on that and that'll create a pattern with the sugar skull going across the middle here. So it'll be like a row like this, and then down here will be another row. Or I can hit reset, I can do by the height. So that way when I'm creating a pattern, it'll look like there is a line of sugar skulls like this. 
Obviously, I would want to decrease the size of the sugar skull before doing this technique. And I'll come over here and hit reset. The other option is I can offset this by manual amount, whatever I want, or I can click this button here and it'll just offset this by both the width and the height. So when I click on that, that puts the design up in the corners here. And this just ensures that when I'm creating a pattern, it's just going to have various sugar skulls going across the entire page. This is what I want for my pattern, so I'll just come over here and click OK. And you guys will remember my final result looked like this, so there's quite a bit of these sugar skulls. If you didn't want this many, you could always come over here and work on the original layer when you're doing this step instead of creating the copy layer, and that'll make the final result look something like this. But in my case, I wanted to have this one in the middle. I want there to be a more densely populated pattern. Okay, so now we have our design in place. Next, what I need to do is get rid of the background and then export this as a pattern. So I'll come over here and just hide the background layer. There's actually two different options to use this as a pattern. If you want to use it immediately, you can go to Edit, Copy Visible. So Control-Shift-C or Command-Shift-C on a Mac. And then let's create a new document. So I'll go to File, New. And we'll go to 1920 by 1080. Obviously, I gotta correct this. And click OK. Hold Control and use the mouse wheel to zoom out a bit. So now if I hit Shift B, that'll grab my bucket fill tool. And make sure the fill type is set to pattern fill. If I come over here, I can click on my clipboard image. So this is when I hit Control C on my keyboard. Or I'm sorry, Control Shift C, since we copied all the visible layers. So the pattern is on your clipboard, and now when I fill this in, you'll see that we'll go ahead and fill the pattern in immediately there. I'll hit Control Z on that. The next method is better if you know you're going to use this pattern at a later date or in a different session. So what you need to do is export this as a pattern file and then drag and drop that pattern into your pattern folder for GIMP. So to do this, I'll go to File, Export As. And I'm going to navigate to the folder where I want to export this. It doesn't quite matter right now because we're going to move it in a second. Just remember where you're saving this. I'm going to name this sugar skull pattern dot and make sure this ends with PAT. That is the file type for a pattern in GIMP and I'll click export. This is the description that's going to show up over here in the pattern section. So I'll just click export. Now I'll open up my file explorer here and just navigate to where I save this. So here is our pattern document and what I need to do now is I need to drag this pattern file into the pattern folder for GIMP. So we need to locate the pattern folder. To do this I can come over here and go to edit, preferences, come down here to folders and scroll down until you get to patterns. So this one has a little X by it. Click on that, and I'm just gonna hit Control C to copy that. You can also come over here and just click on this little icon here, and it'll open up your file explorer. So there's our patterns. I'll double click on that. And you can come back over here to the file explorer that has your pattern, and just drag and drop this directly into the patterns folder. So there's our sugar skull pattern there. So I'll just minimize this and cancel that. If I come over here, I can hit the little refresh icon, and now here is the pattern we created. I did this earlier, so I have a similar one right here. If you click and hold your mouse, it'll show you the full-size view of your pattern. So I'll come back over here to the document we were working on. I still have this set to pattern fill, and right now this is set to my sugar skull pattern right here. So once again, I can click on this and that'll give me my seamless pattern. One thing you might notice though is the pattern is a little bit off. It's not entirely centered on the page here. So this part of the skull is being cut off and this part is almost entirely full or entirely visible. So I hit Control Z. What you can do is create a new layer and I'll just name this pattern and click OK. Then what I like to do is go to Layer, Layer Boundary Size. That's going to give us this little dialog. I'm going to change this to Percent. I like to increase the layer so it's 200% or two times the size of the original. And then click this little center button here and that'll center up our composition on this new layer we created. And I'll click resize. So if I hold control and zoom out, you can see the layer is now much larger than the visible composition. And then I can fill this pattern layer in with our pattern. And in GIMP 2.10.14, you can go to view, show all. 
and that'll show everything that goes off the canvas here. This is a brand new feature. And I'll hit M to grab my move tool, and now I can click and drag on any of these objects until I get basically the look I want to get here. And if it's not quite the size you need it to be, you can always hit Shift S, scale it down a little bit here, and you can also adjust uh, where this sits by dragging the little middle icon here. And I'll drag this up a little bit, like so. Hit the scale button. So now the pattern sits a little bit better in the document here. You can always continue to adjust this to your liking. But now I can come back to view, show all to turn that off, and there is our final result. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. Don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.